so those are some of the main factors that make Roptics a superior product. And at the end of the day, we guarantee our products. So if anybody purchases them, you have a month to use them. If you don't feel a huge effect or love them, we'll take them back. Mm -hmm. So that's how confident we are. We have people with like, you know, just the other day, like some woman with 2 million followers posting on her stories. Like I do all this stuff for my health, but I just put on these glasses, Garmin sleep score, like mm -hmm. hockey stick curve, uh, HRV hockey stick curve. That's all she changed. And we had the same thing when we partnered with Aura. So I'd say, yeah, the commitment to quality, the commitment to science, the focus on doing the best we can, doing right by our customers and always working on improving is what people are really investing in when they purchase a pair. And by the way, we spend a lot of energy to educate people. So it's like by the time somebody purchases from Roptics, they don't realize it. But we've been spending seven years trying to teach people about this and all the other companies, by the way, that, that have high quality, stylish blue right. blocking glasses or close to it basically just copied us. And I know that because if founder of one of them told me that so yeah that makes total sense man that was kind of my story too uh, admittedly i loved your stuff from day one but i was kind of a little shy to pull the trigger on the most expensive ones so lo and behold what happened is i got a bunch of other pairs and they weren't that great and finally over a year ago now i got some raz and i put them on and immediately felt the difference I, i'm not even kidding when i put them on i it's felt like my eyes go ah and I was like, okay, there is there are levels to this. And I think <laughs> you know, one of the things that I've experienced is, like you mentioned clear lens blue blockers. And I think what they were trying to combat is some people are kind of like, I don't want to wear yellow or orange lenses. They kind of look goofy. Although I've only ever got compliments on these. People love them. They're like, they're really cool. Where'd you get them from? But that brings another issue. Are clear light blue blocking glasses a scam? Do they work? Yeah, huge scam, huge scam. Oh man, this is so great that you asked. You know what? Because you asked, I am going to see, just give me a moment. This is how I see in the dark, my red light. Okay. I'm going to get my meter. And I can just test right now and show you. Stand by. Now, the key thing is I just have to pray that my meter has a little bit of juice, which it looks like it does. Let's go. If it didn't have juice, I'd have to just plug it in and then we could, you know, do this demonstration later. But, um, Let's see, turning on, turning on, dark calibration, see, so there's no funny business going on here, everybody. All right, dark <laughs> calibration finished. And look, we have a little bit of juice. All right, oh, very little juice. Okay, well, make this quick. So basically, I'll just give you a real demonstration right now. If you're listening to the podcast, folks, you just have to go on YouTube. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to turn off my blue light blocking, and you should like and subscribe and comment and engage and share the interview <laughs> with all your friends. Obviously, duh. Um, so blank screen, blank screen, spectrometer. Hope the juice lasts. All right, so that's an RGB display. You change the levels of red, green, and blue, and you get colors. But they make white. I'm pointing this at a white Apple Note, just so you know. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm pointing at. But if I point it at my video light, my LED-based video light, then you see a warm white LED curve. If I change the color temperature, you'll see what changes in, in my mm -hmm. face. When I increase the color temperature, a lot more blue and a lot less. So now I'm going warm again, and it's a warm again with a lot less blue, just for fun. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to the RGB display, the screen. Boom. Blue light. Start with the yellow lenses, actually, just so you can see the step-by-step -step approach. So this is hopefully all coming through. You can see this well when yep. I show the meter, correct? Okay, cool. So now I point this here, put the lens in front of it so just so you know what i'm doing is just this mm -hmm. so to block the light and so the blue is completely gone with the yellow lenses so just to show one more time blue yellow lens in front of the meter gone yep all right now sunset lens keep an eye on the green mm -hmm. so mm. mostly gone and we let a little bit of green. We, we, this is with helping color perception. But so that's basically raw optics. Now, back to the clear lenses. Now, this is from Hoya. There's three large lens companies in the world. There's Essilor, Hoya, and Zeiss. This is Hoya's blue protect thing. You can see that flashy blue reflective yep. coating. So you think you're getting this uh, protection. Well, let's see. Are you or are you not? I put it like this. Put it in front of the same exact place I've been doing all the rest of them. And then you can be the judge for yourself. Wow. So yep. there's virtually no blue light protection. Now, what I don't have for you right now to measure is daylight because it is dark outside. And mm. even if I did, I could open the windows here. But if I did have daylight, 
you'd see a very broad spectrum across this whole thing from the ultraviolet or the violet, which is like 380 and below all the way up to red and near infrared goes beyond 780. This is just for visible light. Now, basically these lenses, what they do is they block blue light up to 420 nanometers. Mm. So if I had a spectrum that had that light below that range, which I don't have, but if I, because that's what daylight is, but none of even my LED thing, if I make it a lot colder here, wait, let's see if I make this thing colder. Um, if I make it colder and I measure the LED thing, which is a different spectrum than my screen, it's still not really below 420 nanometers, but let's just try it anyway, just for fun. See if the spectrum changes at all. Hmm. very yeah virtually none because below 430 it's still there's still that little bit but all that's to say all that's to say that if i use this in daylight jesus that blue light is killing me um <laughs> if i use this in daylight uh this meter you would see light below that 420 range and then you could see this lens blocking that okay so if you're concerned that daylight is a problem which it could be in excess the theoretically, then you could block that lower shortest wavelength range with this. And that's the highest energy range. And that includes ultraviolet. But when you're talking about screens, the light that they emit simply isn't in the range that these lenses mm. block. So yeah, they're worthless when it comes to screens and LEDs, which are the basis of all modern lighting. And again, this is like a Hoya blue protect lens, which is literally one of the industry leading lenses. They sell I mean, I don't know the exact numbers, but I'm sure that those eyewear companies, oh yeah, I got to take off the red light, make me look like <laughs> a door or like a mystic. I don't know, one of the two. But anyway, um, the thing is that these lenses, I mean, they're adding this coating for like sometimes $200, wow. like $200 on top of your expensive already. And people think our glasses are expensive. People are paying $300 for a prescription pair of glasses and adding a $200 or $150, usually not much less coating to their uh, product that doesn't even block the wavelength. So mm -hmm. it's like the biggest gimmick ever, I want to say, like ever in the history of marketing of products. And we're going to unearth this. It's just kind of a matter of time or expose, you could say. But um, they just don't block the wavelengths mm -hmm. emitted by screens. I think like you said, it's because people don't want to wear colored lenses. And the only way to block those wavelengths is using color. Because when you subtract the visible blue, then what happens is you see yellow mm -hmm. as a result. It, it's, it's literally like cause and effect, you know, plus and minus. It's physics. Hmm. Anyway. That's super so cool. Our, our lenses, I didn't even say this, why we're probably the, you know, the most expensive. I think there is a company from Norway that's more expensive than us now, so we're going to have to <laughs> kick them out of that spot. But anyway, price is going up. No, I'm just kidding. Be careful, everybody. So, you know, <laughs> jump soon. But anyway, the point is, like, we actually also just block the right wavelengths, mm -hmm. period. So if I focus, and I, I think this is what the whole, you know, us and bond charge and some of the other companies we should unite rather than compete within this tiny mm. niche because it's not that tiny but relative to the optical industry and how many pairs of these lenses they're selling they're probably selling a hundred times as many as the colored blue light protection mm -hmm. lenses combined just because they already have the entire global supply chain and they're just adding this coating wow and so we actually block the right wavelengths which is kind of like you can't overemphasize that we do the research we're actually helping people. And again, what's it worth when you can put on a pair of glasses, you change nothing else, you put on a pair of glasses, and your sleep score goes up in a way that you can measure on your aura ring, Garmin, Whoop, or Apple Watch, like, come on, yeah. that's the best $174 you'll ever spend in your life. Yes, exactly. And back to that, you know, your point about the light diet, it, it's something that a lot of people, it just slips through consciousness for some reason. They think about diet of food. They might even go a step further and think about their media consumption as their, you know, intellectual diet or whatever, but they don't think about this light diet piece. Like we're talking here about the importance and what this can do to actually block the right wavelengths and how it's going to improve your sleep score. But exactly why? Like, why do we want to block blue light? We kind of glossed over that a little bit. Like, explain that out for our listeners. Why is blue light so damaging to the eyes? You even said as you turn your camera down and said, man, this blue light is killing me. And not literally, but maybe literally in a slow dose makes the poison kind of way. What is the toxicity <laughs> yeah. of the blue light and the junk junk light diet that we experience on a day-to-day -day basis? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. Great place to go. So let's see. To start out, just to give context, I would say that people, it's, it's very important for people to understand how light affects 
life in general. So life itself, we could say, is kind of a complex interaction between energy and matter. Or said another way, life as we know it is the result of flow a certain flow of energy through the Earth's environment. And the primary one of the uh, 